Hello, welcome back to Adrian's Chemistry Laboratory. And unlike Tom in fire and explosions, we're actually going to do some yellow chemistry because we're looking at sulfur, the element sulfur at the moment. And in honour of sulfur, I've got my nice sulfur coloured waistcoat. So I'll put on my safety goggles and we'll take a quick look at the element sulfur. Now, uh, sulfur uh, we are used to normally as a yellow powder. And in this form of sulfur, it's precipitated sulfur. And that means that it's been precipitated through a chemical reaction. Now, most of our sulfur uh, that we get comes through the hydrocarbon industry uh, and through extracting it through petrochemicals. Um, lots of sulfur uh, still comes from uh, the ground. And here I have a lovely piece of natural sulfur that came from uh, a volcano in Mexico. And you can see the crystalline form that it takes there. Now, this is too precious for me to go and use it. But we're going to actually make some different crystalline forms of sulfur. We're going to show the different allotropes that sulfur has. And believe it or not, sulfur has over 30 different allotropes. But we're used to about three or four of them in normal life. In the same way that uh, I've got um, phosphorus here, which uh, when it's exposed uh, to sunlight, uh, forms a, like a red substance that can be red phosphorus. Um, this particular piece of phosphorus, this is what we normally see phosphorus like, hasn't been exposed to sunlight and therefore hasn't changed in allotropic form. And of course there are about four forms of phosphorus as well, which of course is a cousin of sulphur. Now I've got before me some roll sulphur. Uh, and this is simply sulphur that has been extracted from the ground using the frash process. So hot water is pumped down at about 180 degrees it's brought up and then it's cast into moulds. What we're going to do is crush some of this, as you can see, it's very brittle solid. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens whenever we heat it up. So if my assistant joins me over in the fume cupboard here, I'm just going to put some uh, sulfur here into this boiling tube and we're going to heat it up and see what begins to happen whenever we heat up the element sulfur. So we'll put the Bunsen burner under it here. Get it going. And already you're beginning to see something happen. It's beginning to move, so it's beginning to melt. Now sulfur forms a, a very uh, yellow runny uh, liquid uh, when it's about 116 degrees. And if we keep heating it up, it will be changed from a yellow liquid to a very dark brown or red liquid and that's about 160 degrees. Uh, I did try this once with a thermometer but unfortunately the thermometers kept breaking. I don't really know why because I've had thermometers in oils at 300 degrees but with sulphur it seems to keep splitting them. So what's happening is the sulphur has melted and sulfur normally consists of uh, molecules uh, of about eight atoms and those eight atoms begin to stretch and move as it's heated up and there we can see that the yellow sulfur that we're normally used to has turned into a very dark brown viscous liquid and that would be about 160 degrees. You can see there's vapour coming off and also there's yellow uh, sublimation happening here. And that is how sulphur is normally purified from volcanic uh, sulphur that is found mixed with rock. Uh, what people do in places like Taiwan and Portugal is to heat um, up the sulphur and actually burn it off and then they can cond condense it. And I'm going to show you an example of that in the old chemistry book. And look, it's beginning, after it's becoming very viscous, to begin to loosen up again. And whenever sulphur gets to about 444 degrees, then it begins to uh, sublime and that's another way that sulphur is being purified for industry and the sublimation product is known as flowers of sulphur. The problem with using flowers of sulphur is uh, they seem to be a lot more chemically active than precipitated sulphur and they have a very sulphur smell and you should never use that for things like gunpowder or fireworks because it would give off free sulfuric acid and could react with the other products in the fireworks or in the uh, flash powder. 
We're just going to cut here simply because we can't, our video is more than five minutes and the second part of this video on sulphur is already available in part two.